plastic or glass plate, anything is fine. And a few thin and big brushes and round brushes. I don't have a small brush, Mataji. So what can I do? Uh, like you don't have any thin, small brush? No, ma'am. Hey, Krishna Mataji. Uh, Mataji, this is my tracing, but I did it a bit small. Is it okay? That's fine. Yes. Uh, Smritha, uh, some, somehow I'm not able to hear everyone uh, properly. It feels like it's too low for me. Um, and the sound is okay, I feel. Uh, yeah, for, uh, on my end, Mantej is coming very low. For everyone, it's the same thing. Your voice and uh, everybody's voice. Let me just see. Mataji, can you see this? Uh, yeah, Haribol Hasani. Yes, I can see that, Hasani. That's nice. Is this okay? This is okay. Yes, that's good. Did you use Sharpie to trace it or how did you do that? I trace, uh, um, I just took out the printout of the cows and just uh, traced it. So that's, uh, th those black lines are with carbon paper? No, I just uh, did it with the sketch pen. Okay. Okay, so when we do acrylics, Hasini, we don't uh, use sketch pen on the um, canvas directly. Like especially black color should not be there on the canvas as your first color. It should be the last color okay. because it's with sketch pen and it will start mixing with other colors when you put other colors. But let's see how... Yeah, then I will cover it with the black acrylic paint. Okay. Hmm. Let's see how we can handle that once we begin the class. And how about everyone else? Uh, who else is here? Asra is here. Uh, who else? Mataji, can I use this palette? Yes, Hasini, you can use that palette. Mataji, don't I, need... don't have, I don't have transfer paper, so how do I transfer my drawing? Okay, I'll discuss that once all the kids are there. I will share one trick with everyone. Yeah, if you want to use your time right now uh, for tracing, you can take a printout uh, if you have printout at home. If you do not have printout, sometimes we get so many uh, magazines, calendars where we can find these kind of uh, pictures. So you can take your printout or any magazine picture, anything. You take the back side of your picture and if you happen to have chalk, pastels with you or chalk colors or any chalk not if like if not chalk pastels if you have any chalk like that you can use it to make it as your own diy diy transfer paper you can uh, these kind of chalks i'm talking about these are soft pastels if you have if you don't have those you can use regular chalk and you just apply that with a dark color with any dark color, I will take brown in this case. You just apply that on the back of your paper. Don't use black color for this. You can make it as dark as you want. And then you put your paper on top of your canvas or wherever you want to trace it arrange it nicely if you would like you can tape your paper along with the edges so that it doesn't move and then you start tracing your picture and this is how I did my picture here I did my tracing with the same process I had those chalk if you even don't have those chalks or chalk pastels you can also use your graphite pencil your regular HB pencil and you can do this entire thing. You can cover everything with your pencil. Uh, that way you will have a lot of graphite on the back of your paper and you turn your paper and then you start tracing and then you will get the imprint on your canvas. 
Mataji, can you explain that one more time? I'm a little confused. Who is that? This Asra. is Asra. Okay, Asra. So Asra, if you have printout, do you have printout with you? No, I have my picture though. Okay, if you have printout or the picture that we did last class, uh, you mm -hmm. can trace from anything. You take your picture and then on the back side of your picture, you either apply a layer of chalk or chalk mm -hmm. pastels. If you do not have any of them, then you can use your graphite pencil and then you use a lot of graphite on the back side like this mm -hmm. on this entire part whichever part you want to trace a lot darker than this and then you flip your paper you place your paper on your canvas you tape it down so that it doesn't move and then you start tracing that way you will get your picture here is that clear Asura? yes okay all right so somebody said that uh, she doesn't have small brush, right? Uh, I want to know who is that? That's me, Mataji. Asha. Asha. Okay. You don't have any small thin brush? No, Mataji. Okay, because that's going to be our first uh, step that using a thin brush, maybe you can buy a set if you are more into acrylic paintings and a good set of brushes is always uh, useful with any other kinds of paintings too, be it acrylics or watercolors, uh, brush markers, and many other types of things, oil painting. So what brushes do you have, Asra? I Did have like, like uh, I used, when I used to paint, I had big canvases. So I had thick brushes with me, my picture. Okay, how do you outline anything? <laughs> I used, I had this one um, small one that I think got broken. It okay. was, yeah, it would chase everything. Okay, no problem. So uh, you can probably use marker in that case. For now, you can start uh, doing your tracing from your picture to your canvas. So this is my canvas panel. It doesn't have a border. And we will start now. Let's look at the image, the reference image that we have. Yes, Madhuji, yeah. We can start, I think. Okay, so this is the uh, reference image that we have. And uh, it doesn't have too many things in the background. It's pretty simple in terms of coloring. We just have to color the background and little bit coloring. Um, the cow is mostly white and there is little bit coloring on the sides of the cow. So we are going to do that. So first, when you... Uh, start uh, doing something on your canvas uh, even if you want to draw something I wouldn't recommend using a pencil uh, on canvas panel it is still okay but on canvas boards um, where we do not have that hard surface underneath if you try to draw something with pencil and if you happen to make any mistake erasing becomes very difficult and little muddier at times it looks very muddy so use chalk uh, to draw your rough sketch on the paper or a very even if when you're using carbon paper there are uh, different colors of carbon paper I uh, assume in different parts of um, the world uh, I, I know two colors black and yellow so I prefer using the yellow one than black sometimes when you transfer using the carbon paper your um, other parts also get the color, like you might get some yellow color or black color on other areas too little bit. But I use this uh, technique, which I just showed you. And I used my, uh, instead of using the black color, I used my brown color here. And it is always advisable to go light. Don't use your black color in the very beginning because it's a very dark color. And if you make mistakes using dark color, um, it's very difficult to fix them. So my first step here in this painting, because we have a blue background, I'm going to trace the outline of my cow using a thin brush. I'm using this number one brush. All the brushes would have some numbers. It says number one here. So I'm going to use this number one brush uh, to outline this. So 
first we need to understand like there there are different kinds of acrylic paints some paints are uh, more liquidy i have these bottles martin can you just check can you just check if this brush is okay to use for this okay let me check that yeah that brush looks okay does it has do you see any number on that Yes, it's two. Margaret. Two, two is also fine. Yes, you can use two number also. But the key is this brush okay? Yes, this brush is okay. It should be a round brush, uh, and uh, if it has a point, that would be better. Sometimes some of the brushes will not have point. Uh, let me just show you if I have something like that. Like if you can see this brush. you can see the difference between these two brushes the other brush is also thin but uh, you know um, the bristles are not uh, tight together and uh, this is one of my old brush and you see there is a point in this brush so you need a brush which have some point and bristles are tightly uh, tight together the bristles should not be loose so asini i felt your brush was like this right so if you can find a brush yes. which is nice firm use that so hasini you do not need that brush right now because you already traced using a marker so first thing that i will use my brown color here instead of black again i am going to take my palette don't put your palette on top of your canvas like how i am doing i am doing just because i have a limited space to show you in front of the camera but uh, sometimes some accidents can happen and you can accidentally spill color on your canvas so always do it on the side i'm taking this one of my brown color here some colors are in tube acrylic colors are more uh, water based colors so those colors which are in tube those uh, those are very dense colors and you need more water with them with these colors you do need water but not as much as you need with um tube colors so i mixed one drop of brown and one drop of uh, my black hair i'm taking one drop of water and mixing these two colors together you should have a nice flowing consistency of water how do you uh, your paint how do you check that you take any rough sheet you can take any scrap paper i'm adding another drop of water here and check whether you have right consistency of water you should be able to draw long lines with your brush like this it should be smooth sometimes it's too dry sometimes it's too liquidy so you need to add one drop at a time mix it nicely and then check whether you have right free flowing consistency of your acrylic yet or not so different uh, brands will behave differently and will need different amount of water in them so check by adding one drop at a time sometimes you will feel that when you're doing your line it will dry out and it will not be very smooth while working so add another drop of water to your color uh samrudha do you have any question yes mata ji i don't have brown right now can i use a brush pen no no brush pen on the canvas if you do not have brown use uh, little red and black mix them together and use that color okay okay so somehow on my end i'm not able to hear everyone properly i don't know what went wrong uh, volume seems to be full high but still it's very very low everything uh, is coming very low so i might miss out somebody so you can uh, write down on the chat box if i'm not able to hear you properly so now i'm taking my this number 1 brush mixing my color nicely in my palette 
you don't want too much color in your brush you take out the extra by cleaning it from the sides and then you start tracing your canvas when you start tracing start from the area which is actually black so i would actually start tracing from the tail rather than from the mouth because if I may make any mistake, it's easier to correct here than on the face. That's the main highlight of my cow. And I don't want to experiment there uh, in my first attempt. So start something which is hidden, which is in the corner or which is actually black color. So my brush is working nice, smooth. I will keep taking water in my brush every time. If you want, you can take even lighter color. I feel my color is very, very dark. So I will make it even more lighter. So this is how you will start your tracing. You all can start and I will wait here. Mataji, but my uh, tracing is already a bit dark in blue. Is it okay if it's already like that? Or... Since it is already dark, we can't change that at this point of time. So you keep it dark. Um, is it a, should I put the coat again or uh, let it stay as it is? Because it's already dark in blue. Okay, but you did not use paint yet, right? It's just uh, with the carbon no, paper or? Yes, yes, with the carbon. Yeah, then you use paint on this. Okay. So you start tracing and, uh, okay. Uh, I feel they, you can make this uh, four leg a little thick here. Check the reference image. So I'm first doing the areas where even if I end up making a mistake, it's fine. I can still fix them. It doesn't bother the shape of the actual cow. So first I want to do a little warm up on these areas. And as I do a little bit of this, my hand will get comfortable and will get a little bit of practice on doing this. Then I will move on to other areas of the cow. Move your canvas if you need to. Don't take too much paint in your brush. Move your canvas if that is needed to get your smooth curves. Sometimes uh, moving does help getting better curves and lines. And hold your brush on the metallic part like you can see how I'm holding it here. Don't hold it too far. That is not wrong, but that you can hold it there also, but that comes after some practice. So in the beginning, I would advise hold it like your pencil or pen and then work with it. Samrudha, do you have another question? No, I did Oh, okay. Probably you can put that electronic hand, uh, which is raised down. You can lower that. So now you all know how this step has to be done. I will speed up a little bit. You don't want to rush through this step because this is the actual subject. Uh, and this is your main drawing. So you don't want to rush through this step.
Hasini, if you want, you can st uh, start tracing uh, some parts of your cow. Yes, Madhu. Uh, on actually, I did it with carbon paper, and then with the sketch pen, I did it. Yeah, that was not needed, uh, but I know because you already did that with sketch pen. So now you can try tracing some of the parts. If you're not getting thin lines, any of you, uh, as I am getting. So again, there are two different ways on holding your brush and using your brush. Sometimes we tend to put all the bristles down and do our lines. This way you will get very fat lines, thick lines. You have to use your brush hold your brush in more in upright position and then use only the point of your brush. Martin if you're not part. sure whether you will get nice lines, you can always try it on a scrap paper first and then move on to your canvas. So there are a few more things uh, like you can see I did some part of my cow already and I want to do this like let's say now I know I just did this part and if I put my hand here my this part is still wet so I should not be doing this leg right now because my hand would be resting on the wet part of the canvas so we need to be a little careful on that also if I really want to do this either I have to move my canvas in a different direction so that I don't touch any wet part of my canvas or I should do some other part of the canvas right now where I'm not touching anything. So right now I'm moving and doing that leg. There's one more thing I will uh, tell here that sometimes we try to keep uh, our sketchbook or canvas whatever we are working too close to us and we do not have enough room to move our hand move freely on our work space or work area or our canvas so push it little back and then make sure your hand has enough room to work freely uh, don't keep it too close to you okay Hasini, do you have any question Yes, Mataji. Mataji, here, this rounds are there, right? So right. if we just just uh, try it, I'm, if I'm just trying to um, color that, trace out that, it is just uh, filling the color. So what to do? So your color is spreading there? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you trying to use any paint on that area? Yes. It should not happen if you have nice color in your brush. If your brush is too watery, that might happen. And this is the reason why we should not use marker and especially Hasani, the black marker. Uh, it smudges a lot. It can spread a lot of black on your canvas. So I just want you to try some of the areas if you want to do some practice or you can do it on a different piece of paper or on your printout to practice your thin lines, okay? Even when you were using your marker, your lines are very, very thick, Hasini. Yes, you can try doing it on that printout so that you get practice on using your brush with thin lines. Okay, so the here, here goes my another tip for all of you. If any one of you want me to wait, if I'm going too fast, you can let me know. My another tip, sometimes uh, you really don't want to touch everything. You make use of your pinky finger, your pinky, and then you rest your pinky uh, on the canvas. You don't get enough space to put your hand down. Right now, that's not a problem, but sometimes that happens. And then you make use of your pinky to rest your hand and then you draw. So that requires little practice because I want to keep my brush in upright position rather than slant. As soon as I will make it slant, my lines will become thicker. Like you can see, my this line is comparatively thicker than this line because I was not making use of my pinky and my bristles went down. So to keep your brush in upright position, sometimes we use 
pinky and do this. This is a very useful tip, especially if you are doing big canvases. Hasini, you can start doing uh, white color in your cow. So I'm not going to finish this entire cow right now. I'll just quickly finish the face and then we will move on uh, to other parts of our coloring today. As you can see, I'm moving my canvas a lot because I don't want to touch wet part of my coloring. Try not to push too much onto your brush or even when you're using marker. Hasni, like in your case, you were using marker. When you press too much and you try to be too perfect, when we try to be too perfect and too precise, we end up putting more pressure on our brush and marker. And that makes our line very, very thick. I'll show you here. Like I want to be really perfect and then I'm putting more pressure on my brush. It's bending down my bristles and then it's creating thick lines. So you have to be really soft, not putting pressure on your brush. And I am making use of my pinky here so that my line can go straight. If you're not getting it right, right now, while doing it for the first time with me, it's okay. It does require little practice. So if you want to practice this, take any magazine papers, any pictures that you like, um, weather printouts, and trace using your thin brush. This will give you a very good practice. Mataji, can I use a Sharpie or something to trace it? Because I, do I do not have. Okay, um, you can use Sharpie, but not right now, towards the end of your entire coloring. Okay. So I assume some of you are struggling because of not having thin brushes and some already uh, did with marker. So I will just stop here and we will move to next part of our coloring. So next part of our coloring is the background here, which is pretty simple, just one flat color, that's uh, orange. I saw many other pictures today uh, of the same style. Uh, they had variety of other colors. Let me just see if I can pull out those images for you. This will give you some idea. All right, I don't have the pictures, but you can do yellow in the background. You can do orange in the background. Uh, many different combinations can be done. So. Let me see what color I would like to do here. I do have this blue with me. I will stick with that. So for doing this, you are using a round brush again, but this time a little thicker brush than what you were using earlier. So because your canvas is big, so I have this big brush. Uh, this is number eight right now. You can use number four, five, six, anything is fine, but not one or two. Again, I'm dipping my brush in water because I took a lot of paint this time, much more than what I took last time. I need more water here. So I am adding three, four drops of water. Mix it nicely. 
I did not use two colors. I am just taking my blue. Blue color. Blue color. And then again, I'm checking on a scrap paper whether my color has been mixed nicely. It's not creating any lumps. There is no dryness. So it looks fine to me. And I will use this color in my background here. So when you are using uh, your background color, my choice would be to do orange color or yellow color. Let me just bring that. I'm not liking this color much. Let me bring my yellow or orange. And I think that's a very bright and beautiful color for the background. So before that, I will wash my brush. When I say wash your brush, make sure you wash really nicely and take a paper towel, clean it there. See, some color is still coming out. That means my brush is not fully clean yet. So I, I'm, I will go back and wash my brush again and wipe here. I still have some blue coming from my brush. So you keep repeating the process until you see that your bristles are fully clean and there's no color coming out of your, from your brush. So this is how you make sure that you're cleaning your brush really nice. Now let me bring my yellow or orange color and then we will start with that in the background. So I do have my yellow color with me now and I'm since yellow is a lighter color than blue, I am not going to use the same water for mixing here. It's a fresh color. I'm going to use my clean water to mix this color with clean brush. If you haven't cleaned your brush properly, you might end up mixing your blue with your yellow now. It's very lumpy. You can see there is there are lumps, so I don't have enough water. I will keep adding more water. Again, check here. Yes, it's very smooth. There is no dryness. I'm going to use this color. So I'll show you how to do your background, making sure that you're not going inside the cow. Again, I will not start straight from the face, start from some other areas of your canvas where even if you end up making mistakes, they are not the main highlight and you can fix that. So what I'm going to do now, you can see how I'm taking color in my brush and cleaning it from one side, making sure uh, the color is not dripping from my brush and from this side too. First, I'm going to do it only on the sides. So, Hasani, like you have very thick black lines. So, when you're doing this, you can actually cover your black lines a little bit. You can go on top of your black line. Let's say my this brown line is very thick and I want to make it look thin. So, I will take my yellow color and I will go a little bit on top of that. Okay, Mataji. Okay. Since yellow is a very light color, even if we end up making mistakes with yellow, it doesn't show up immediately. So it's a good color to do in the background if you're doing uh, this for the first time or we're beginner here. So even if my yellow is going on top of my brown lines, it's not really too visible. So I will first do all the sides. You can see yellow is going on some of my lines. Either I can just wipe it right now. If your brush is not able to reach uh, very small areas, you can use a thin brush for that area. And put now. 
I will continue with this brush. If you're using a dark color, then don't trace full cow in the beginning. Don't trace everything in the beginning. Looks like I'm missing some parts here. So let me go back and look in the printout. Now I will continue coloring. If you have uh, some stains on your canvas from your carbon paper or from your marker, like there are some stains or which is not getting covered up while doing your yellow, you do need multiple layers of your coloring. So once you finish your entire cow, uh, the outline like this, then you start coloring the actual background. And this time you can take a bigger brush than this. Mataji, can you see uh, my uh, yellow color is pretty light and uh, can I use this or should I mix anything else in it? You can use it. Maybe just for okay, one Mataji. drop of water. Okay, Mataji. Okay. Yes, it's, it's nice color. So now I'm taking a big brush, which is more like a flat brush. Uh, this is not a round brush, it's a flat brush. So I am using this brush, taking my yellow. And now I will start coloring in one direction. Making sure you spread your color evenly. Don't try to make a very thick layer in the beginning. If you feel that your color is coming out too light and your strokes are visible, don't worry about it. In yellow, it's not... Uh, so much visible but if you are using some other color your strokes will be visible so don't worry about that you do need multiple layers of coloring to cover that nicely for now just do a thin layer don't do multiple layers uh, in one go Mataji the, you can use blue also you can use blue, you can use orange, whatever color you like for the background. You can use that. You can Google uh, some of the cow images. This is called Pichwai art, this style of cow. So Pichwai cow paintings. And you will get many different combinations of color. A lot of people add flowers in the background too. And that also looks very beautiful. You can also add those flowers. Mataji, for background, uh, can we color yellow and on that, uh, can we add blue flowers? 
you will add pink flowers pink flowers on yellow on yellow yes or red flowers dark pink if any one of you would like to show me your canvas you can sh start showing me your work so like this you will do your one layer you will finish one layer fully and then you add another layer to make it little thick if you are using some other color so especially when you have flat brush it has an added advantage you just keep it flat like this and move along with the body of your cow you will get fine edges automatically to get crisp straight lines just keep it flat you can see here how i'm using my flat brush to create that so has any since you already have your outline you can use a flat brush to do your background like this so i'm not getting into the thin areas with my br big brush i will leave that part and come back with my thin brush madhu ji i'm actually using blue color and uh, i can kind of see the white uh, canvas places like just a second so asra as you said you do not have thin brushes but if you have big flat brush you can also use that for going along with your edges like this and then you can use your marker or sharpie at the end to trace your cow mata ji is this how it looks right now let me see Mm. did you trace that with brush um i tried it's very nice good it came out very good as well thank you madam okay with acrylic colors uh, one more thing i would like to add here these colors do dry up so sometimes uh, when we are very new to acrylic colors we tend to fill our palette with too much color we fill it up to the top don't do that take little at a time if you're not using uh, everything today then it will dry up tomorrow so take whatever you need don't fill your palette and try to maintain 
uh, one direction for your strokes. Like I started doing everything sideways, so maintain sideways throughout your canvas. Now I will move back to my smaller brush for covering the tight spaces. Right now, as you can see that everything is wet and I cannot rest my hand anywhere. So I have to either keep it inside here or make use of my pinky to keep my brush in upright position. So this is where you will be needing or practicing. Practicing using your pinky to hold your brush. Mataji, can you see this? Okay, you see the black smudges, Asura? Sorry, not Asura, Ma Hasini. Yes. Yes, so you need to wash your brush really nice and do couple of more layers on that part so that you can cover that. Yeah, okay. Okay, but not uh, not in one go. Like you do one layer, let it dry, then come back again, do one more layer. Uh, my advice for you would be, you should have used a darker color than yellow because darker color will cover black very easily than yellow. So what you can do, Hasani, you can, uh, yeah, I will advise you use a darker color because you have a lot of smudges there. Now my first layer is almost dry. I can uh, I can do another layer of yellow, but I'm not doing it right now. You all finish this much and let me know. Again, uh, keep in mind that these colors are not washable. These are permanent colors. Be careful on your clothes, on your carpets and other surfaces. You can take it out from table and your hands easily, but not from your clothes. Krishna Chaitanya, are you also doing this painting? Mm, yes, Mataji. Would you like to show me over? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you also use marker for the cow? No, Mataji, we use acrylic paint. You used acrylic paint, okay. Very nice, Krishna. Mataji, I have acrylic paint as well, but because of my um, broom capacity, can I please use watercolor maybe to make it more abstract now that I've already have the uh, the picture of the... You can uh, use uh, watercolors on canvas, but watercolors are not uh, this solid, this pigmented. And uh, they yeah, Mataji, I wanted to try more pastel. And I thought watercolors are more pastel. Okay, you can try that. 
but you will still be able to see the texture of your canvas with watercolors because uh, the pigments are different in watercolors than in acrylics okay oh, okay. okay 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 so krishna chaitanya my advice for you that you um, uh, uh, keep taking some magazine paper some pictures which you like and trace that with your uh, thin brush markers as your regular practice so that will help you to improve uh, uh, using uh, your thin brush for thin lines mataji we don't have thin brush so you don't have thin brush what number brush did you use um we use three i don't know see the numbers or two no no that one did not have number okay so once your um, canvas dries up you can um, do another layer now we will move on to other parts especially the tricky part where we have to do little bit of shading kind of effect on the cow body you can see this kind of a color for this you are going to paint your entire cow with white paint first i'm not doing it here uh because i want to save time uh, let me just quickly do little so first i will wash my brush make sure you wash nicely and check no color should come out there's so much color in my brush i need to clean again keep two containers one clean one and one for washing your brushes keep cleaning until you feel that your brush is fully coming out clear it's not clear yet i'm going to take white one drop of water using my flat brush for this make sure you mix it nicely clean the brushes from both sides because it's a big brush and it will take so much paint in one time since your canvas is already white you might not need too many layers of white here so one layer is enough if any one of you uh, uh wasn't able to make uh, nice thin lines on the body so this is the time you cover your lines with your white color and yellow color you cover it up nicely and later on like us i think asra was asking if you do not have thin, thin brushes once you finish your yellow background and your body like this with white you can use your marker to do outline don't use black marker i would advise use brown marker something which is on the darker side of brown so when i am coloring here you can see that i am going with the flow of my lines how the body curves are going i am doing my coloring with that i am not using any random strokes like uh, sideways up and down i am not doing that i am trying to go with the flow of my curves and then whenever um wherever we see a large space you maintain one direction you can also make your cow off white if you happen to have off white color you can also use that
So again, I'm not doing this entire body right now. You can see I made a mistake here. There were double lines uh, when I did my initial tracing. So there was one extra line. And when I'm putting white, it's uh, not hiding properly. So I have to do multiple layers for that. Right now, my first layer is still wet. I should do my second layer once it is dry uh, because I don't have much time here. I'm just showing you with multiple layers, I will be able to hide that. So that's for any other color also, not just with white. If you have some stain in the background or somewhere, use multiple layers, same direction. And then you will be able to hide any unwanted colors or marks or stains that you have. And then I'm washing my brush. Now I will move back to my thin brush or medium brush. So this is my number eight brush. Whenever you're taking water, don't take it in disposable cups. Those are very lightweight and you can spill water very easily on your table. So take something which is heavyweight. Okay, so now my brush is clean and we will move on to the other areas like this red. I will go get my red color. So I figured out that I ran out of my red color. So I'm using my this brown color only. It's not exactly brown, but a burgundy color, which I used initially. I'm going to use that with my medium brush. I'm taking very little color only on the tip of my brush. I'm not putting color on all the bristles. I need very little. And again, my canvas is wet here. I'm not going to put my hand anywhere on this area. I'm resting my pinky on the yellow part because yellow is the dry area. I applied a little less color than what I see here in the picture because I'm going to spread that little bit. So do little less than what you see. After this, I'm washing my brush, wiping it and just take Marthaji, Yes. Which color are we using? You can use red for this. I don't have red, so I'm using burgundy, but you can use red for this. Okay, so I applied little color only on the top. After that, I washed my brush. Then I'm dipping my brush in clean water and dabbing my brush onto paper towel because I want to take out the excess water from my brush. Just lightly wet brush. And then on the edges of the color, look here. Look this carefully. You're just doing this dab, dab, dab. Yeah, so what is happening right now, your color is getting mixed with the white in the background and you just 
do how much ever you want, like only this much. And that's it. You might need to repeat the process two times, depending upon what colors, what type of colors you're using, which brand you're using. I'm putting it on the top one more time, washing my brush, putting it in clean water, taking out the excess water, and then just on the sides, just do this dab, dab, dab. It will spread the color a little bit and mix it with your white. I will stop here. You can try this on your canvas now. So you can see how it was little darker on the top and as we are getting down, it's getting lighter. If any one of you want to show me your canvas and want to check for any corrections, you can show me your work. Mataji, I'm actually using this blue and it's kind of, uh, I can see the canvas texture. So if I do one more coat, will it disappear? Would you like to show me and ask your question? Like what exactly you're asking? Yeah, one. You see, it's kind of unevenly colored. So if I do a second coat, will it be even? Yeah, for making this even, you should not use too much color uh, with your first layer or any layer. You should not apply too much color. So yes, uh, this happens you when you don't have the same amount of color in your brush every single time. So with not just one more layer, maybe you need two more layers. But okay? uh, I just want to know if it's normal or I'm doing any mistake. Uh, the mistake is that your brush uh, does have a lot more color. Uh, whenever you're taking color, let's say you're taking blue color, when you take color, look at the screen and then wipe from both sides. Okay, oh, and then okay. use your brush because you do not want too much uh, paint on your brush. So wipe a yeah. little bit from both sides and then you use your brush so that you get thin layer every time. Okay, message. Okay, when you don't yes. do that, uh, then you end up taking too much color in your brush. So sometimes it is getting thick, sometimes it is getting thin. That makes it look uneven. Okay. So it's quite uneven right now. To cover that, you need minimum two more layers. And when you're adding your more layers, make sure you do even layers. Okay. So sometimes you might not have the exact same shades as in picture. Don't stop yourself uh, doing your artwork. Uh, be creative, mix colors or use something else anyways. It's not a realistic painting. So we don't need to stick to the real color. Like I didn't have that red color. So I used my burgundy color. 
I might not have many matching colors as in this picture, but you can be little creative and use whatever you feel like will go with your picture. So don't you stop yourself uh, if you do not have everything exactly matching. Okay, it's already 9.30. We will stop here and uh, continue the same project in our next class. A lot of students did not join here. Um, assuming you might have a few more questions once we finish this. Uh, the same technique uh, you are going to use on other parts of the cow. This is the same technique. But if you're not able to do that, you're not able to achieve that kind of look and it's not coming out proper, you can ask me your questions next class. So before we end the session for today, uh, is there anyone who would uh, like to ask any question or would like to show me their work? Masaji, the rest of the parts are just the reputation. Is there anything else we have to do? No, it's just the reputation. Mm -hmm. Just the um, little bit shading on the cow body edges. Uh, it's the same technique, um, but just different color. Uh, with a little bit of practice, you will get that. So I will say, um, try it on a separate piece of paper. Maybe on paper, you might not get the right uh, look and feel of your technique because on paper, the colors behave a little differently than on canvas. But still try it there and then come on your canvas if you are able to finish everything do share your pictures in the group if you're not able to uh, fully finish it and you you find any trouble we can discuss that next class mm -hmm. yes um can you show us how to do a technique mixing the colors red and white like you want to see the same thing one more time mm, yes Okay, sure. Okay, so the same thing has been done on the legs also. So I'm using my medium brush. You can use, uh, when I say medium, anything between number five to eight, you can use or depending upon how big the cow is. I do not have any white here in the background yet. So let me just quickly do my white first. As I uh, just said, that whenever you're taking color, make sure you wipe it. Uh, dip your brush in water, make sure your bristles are wet, and then take it. So I'm putting a little white in the background first. And then I'm taking that burgundy color. It goes up to this, okay? First, make a marking how far you have to apply that color. So it's not coming out very um, even in first go. With my first layer, it's not very even and dark yet. Make sure you use your brush in one direction to make it look more even looking. Now the end of this color. Okay. At this stage, I will go wash my brush. Wash your brush, clean it. And then just dip it in clean water one more time. Touch that with paper towel so that you take out the excess water. But your bristles should be just wet. Not too wet, but just wet. And at the end here, you're just doing this dab, dab, dab. And wipe your brush and then do this one more time. You might have to keep repeating it. Uh, once it is dry, I will repeat the uh, step one more time and I will get that look.
right now you can see when i'm doing at the end this dab 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 it's getting little faded and mixing up with the white in the background Make sure your brush is not too wet, otherwise it will start taking off the color uh, rather than doing this. You can take white now. If you think that it's spreading too much, you can take white in your brush. Before taking white, you must clean your brush. Take little white only in the tip and do it in the reverse direction. Wipe, no more water needed, and then do this. So you want to achieve that faded look at the end where you're mixing your two colors. Is it clear now? Yes, Mataji. All right. So we will you, Mataji. No problem. So we are going to end the session here. If you have any more questions, you can ask next class. I'm hoping you will be able to finish this cow without any trouble. But just in case you are not able to do it and you need any help, you can always reach out to me. Hari bol everyone. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, all the kids. Mataji, you will uh, continue the same project next also, next time also? Yes, Mataji. If uh, uh, kids have any questions, we will continue this or we will begin with something else also if we have time. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Mataji. It's very nice. Problem, Mataji. Hari Krishna, Mataji. Thank you, all the kids, for joining. Hari Bol, everyone. Hari Bol, Hari Krishna.